Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of God and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For our Archbishop and Father Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, for all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. For this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house your compassion grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. <laughs> και πάντα τέντος μου το όνομα το Άγιον Αυτού. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all that he has done for you. The Lord in heaven has prepared his throne, and his kingdom rules over all. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Jacob is his help, whose hope is 
in peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Master and Lord our God, you have established in heaven the orders and hosts of angels and archangels to minister you to your glory. Grant that the holy angels may enter with us, that together we may serve and glorify your goodness. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Blessed is the entrance of your holy ones always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Christ our God is risen, granting to the world great mercy. Please, with our choir, the hymn of the church, it is on page two of your bulletins. <laughs> Stop. 
most pure temple of the Savior, his most precious bridal chamber, the virgin sacred treasury of God's glory, enters today into the house of the Lord, bringing with her the grace of the divine spirit. Wherefore the angels of God are singing, Behold the heavenly tabernacle. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> holy God, you dwell among your saints. You are praised by the seraphim with the thrice holy hymn and glorified by the cherubim worshiped by all the heavenly powers. You have brought all the things out of nothing into being. You have created man and woman in your image and likeness and adorned them with all the gifts of your grace. You give wisdom and son and understanding to the supplicant and do not overlook the sinner, but have established repentance as a way of salvation. You have enabled us, your lowly and worthy servants, to stand at this hour before the glory of your holy altar, to offer the worship and praise. <clears throat> Master, accept the thrice holy hymn also from the lips of our sinners to visit us in your goodness. Forgive our voluntary and voluntary transgressions, sanctify our souls and bodies, and grant the worship and serve your holiness all the days of our lives. By the intercession of the Holy Father, thou us all that we may be the gifts of our creators. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Let us be attentive. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall bring forth understanding. Hear this, all you nations. Wisdom. And the reading of some say what letter to the Hebrews. Let us be attentive. Brethren, it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, unstained, separated from sinners, exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, 
first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did this once for all when he offered up himself. Indeed, the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Now the point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister in the sanctuary, and the true tent which is set up, not by man, but by the Lord. Peace be to you, the reader. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Let us be attentive. At that time, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered right. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But the Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, Go. And do likewise. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Good morning. Our church school students, please come up to the front. Good morning to all of you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Glad to see you here today. You know, people get famous for a lot of different things, don't they? When you get really famous for one thing, sometimes they'll actually put that thing at the end of your name, and they'll put the, put the word the. So, for example, like on a famous but not quite so good side, Conan the, what? Barbarian, right? Okay. On a more positive note, especially all of our Greek history students here, Alexander the, great, excellent, all right. Well, guess what? Yesterday and today in the life of the church, we celebrate two saints that are very famous for things that they did, 
so famous that in the life of the church, they added the word the and something else to the end of their name. Today, we celebrate St. John Chrysostom. Now, does anybody think that Chrysostom is a last name? No, it's really not. We, we, the way we say it, St. John Chrysostom, it sounds like his last name. It's actually St. John the Chrysostom, because in Greek it would be Aios Ioannis o Chrysostomos. Why is he called the Chrysostom? Anybody know? Actually, hang on one second, because I want to pull a hymn out that I left up here that explains that. Does anybody know why he is called Chrysostom? In Greek, chrysos means what? Does anybody know? Chrysos, does anybody ever have your little yaya comes up to you and says, oh, chrysomu, right? What does that mean? It means gold, right? It means gold. And stoma is what? Anybody know? Especially when yaya says, Christos stomasu, what? Huh? What is that? Everybody? Your mouth. So, the Chrysostom, Chrysostomos, would be somebody who has a what? A golden mouth. Now, can, do you think that's because he had a whole bunch of false teeth that were all gold? And when he smiled, people went, ah, oh, back off, golden mouth. No. Why? Because what was so gold? He preached. Say it again. He preached. He preached, and his words were so beautiful, they were like gold. Here's what the hymn says. You pour out your sacred teachings, which is more splendid than gold itself, O blessed Chrysostom. So St. John Chrysostom is a patron saint of preachers. He's also a patron saint of clergy. All the priests throughout the Orthodox world sort of celebrate their feast day today, and all the bishops, everyone ordained for St. John Chrysostom. He was an archbishop of Constantinople. Okay, that's the one. The other one was actually celebrated yesterday. Coincidentally, he was a John as well. And his name was St. John the Merciful. So St. John Chrysostom, the Chrysostom, was famous for his golden mouth preaching, golden word preaching. What do you think St. John the Merciful was famous for? Being? Merciful. Excellent job. Thank you very much. Go to the head of the class. So... He was merciful in obedience to the gospel today. Does anybody remember the end of the gospel? This was a story today about what? About the Good Samaritan, right? And Jesus says at the end, as they're questioning him, he, say, he says to the people, who do you think proved to be the neighbor who fell among the robbers? Who was the neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the, they answered, the one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus says, go and do likewise. So St. John was a patriarch of Alexandria in Egypt, and he took that very seriously. And he became known as St. John the Merciful because of all the wonderful acts of mercy that he did. When he became patriarch, he sent out his staff and said, go find all the poor people in the city of Alexandria and let me know how many they are. And when it came back, it found out that there were 7,000 families that were poor in the city of Alexandria in those days. So he gathered all the resources and the donations and everything he needed and, the, the, and what they had within the church to help out all these people. But there's another great story about St. John, and this will help you really understand how he was merciful. Hold on to that a second. All right. St. John was a, quite a humble man. In fact, he referred to himself privately as St. John the Humble, meaning he didn't exalt himself about anybody else. He slept on a really rough kind of a bed. Now imagine, in the patriarchal palaces, they have beautiful bedrooms and furnitures and lots of cushions and everything else, but he chose to sleep on kind of a, because he was a, a monastic, and he chose to sleep on kind of a rough thing, and he took just a simple little blanket. For example, like this. All right. And, and he covered himself up with something like this at night. You know, this blanket is so thin. You can practically see through it, right? You see that? You can almost see through it, right? Do you think this would keep you very warm at night? No. But you know what? He was such a simple and humble man. He just went to bed on this very rough bed, and he covered himself up. And nobody knew that, really, because there were people that were in his chamber that watched after him and so forth. But 
One day, a man who was very rich, he owned a lot of land in Alexandria, said, this is terrible. We have our patriarch, and he's sleeping, and he's sleeping under a blanket that has almost holes in it. You can see through it. This is awful. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, and I'm going to buy him a really beautiful, comfy, look at this, flowers and everything. I'm going to buy him a beautiful, comfortable blanket, and I'm going to make him comfortable so, so we can, he can have some dignity when he sleeps, right? It's a beautiful blanket. It's way more beautiful than this one, actually. It cost 36 gold coins. That's a lot of money. Who knows? It might have had jewels and everything else in it, you know, goose feathers and all that. So he gave, the patriarch, being humble, what do you think he did? said, no, 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 I'm too humble to sleep under that blanket. What did he do? What would you do? You took it. He took it. The man gave it to him as a genuine gift. He took it, and he went to bed that night, and he couldn't sleep at all. Why? Why do you think he couldn't sleep at all under this beautiful, beautiful, comfortable, and warm blanket? Why couldn't he sleep at all? Because he was too humble, that's right, and he knew that there were a lot of poor people out there, and he's thinking to himself, you know, one gold coin could buy, let me see, one gold coin could buy, uh, sorry, hang on, how many, how many, how many? <laughs> uh, Oh, I can't find the number. I can't believe it. Oh, four. Sorry. Okay. So one gold coin could buy four of these simple blankets. He said, there's a lot of people out there that don't have the money to buy a blanket. They're laying out in the streets. They're cold. They don't know how to take care of themselves. They don't have the, the money and everything else. So he says, when I get up in the morning, I'm going to fix this. He got up in the morning, and he took the blanket back to the marketplace. And he sold it for how much? 36 gold coins. Took the gold coins, and he bought how many? You could buy four blankets for 36. You could buy four blankets for a gold coin. How many of these did he buy? 100 and, come on, do the math. Where's my math, people? 140. Four. So he bought 144 blankets and he took them and he gave them out to all the poor people. The next day, the rich man goes to the market. He says, oh, this is the blanket I bought the patriarch. What's it doing here? Here, here's six more gold coins. Let me take it. He took the blanket, uh, 36 more gold coins. He took the blanket back to the patriarch. He says, I found this in the market. I don't know how it ended up there, but here, keep this. Patriarch says, okay. Next day, he takes it back to the market, <laughs> gives it back to the guy. The guy gives him 36 gold coins. He goes and he buys 140, 144, right? More blankets, and he gives them to the more poor people. Next day, the rich guy comes across the marketplace. Oh my gosh, here we go again. I'm going to win this one. He buys the blanket back, right? Takes it, gives it to the patriarch. This is the last straw. What do you think the patriarch does? Kept it? How many think he kept it this time? How many thinks he went back again? He went back again. <laughs> Sold it back again. 36 more gold coins. Went back and bought 144 more blankets, gave them out to the poor. Rich guy finally comes up to him and says, What's going on? I keep buying this blanket, you keep selling it back. And the patriarch says, your great love for me and wanting me to be well makes you keep buying that blanket for me. My great love for the poor makes me wanting to keep help them. So guess what? We could do this all day. <laughs> Let's see who gives up first. That's what he said. Let's see who gives up first. So the question is, if St. John Chrysostom was so great at his preaching, he became known as St. John the Golden Mouth. And if St. John the Merciful was so kind to people, he became known as St. John the Merciful. What word are people going to say about you? If they have to say Maximus the, 
They have to say Themi the, Vasili the, Christian the, Theodore the, Angeliki the. What word do you think they're going to add at the end of your name? Hmm? You know how they'll know what the right word to add is? They'll know by watching your life and what you do with it and how you love others and how you serve God. That's how they will know what to add at the end of your name. And I pray that it will be a great honor and something that is blessed by God to inspire others to do the same. God bless you. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power we may give glory to you, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. No one bound by worldly desires and pleasures is worthy to approach, draw near, minister you the King of glory, to serve you as great and awesome, even for the heavenly powers. But because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, he became man without alteration or change. You have served as a high priest and Lord of all, and trusted with us a celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. You alone, Lord our God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. You are seated in the throne of the cherubim, the Lord of the seraphim, and the King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You are alone and good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from my evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, the best of the grace of priests, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. Do I come with bowed head and do not pray? And do, I, do, I, do I come with bowed head and pray? Do not turn your face away from me, from me or direct me from among your servants, making your sinful and unworthy servant worthy to offer these gifts to you. Christ, your God of the offer and the offered. The one who receives and distributed unto you, we give glory together with your eternal Father and your holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life, that we may receive the King of all, invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity. Let us set aside all the cares of this life, that we may receive the King of all, invisibly escorted by the angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia. Itai quero vi mistico si conismo des que sois opio triadi ton trisa ionim em prosado nes pasintin biotikina potomen tamrerimnan osten vasile antonolen pode psomni tes angelikes oratos turi poromen taxasin alleluia 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 come let us worship bow down to God, Christ our God left the proskinism ke prospesmen tus otas lik tevimon come let us worship bow down to Christ himself our king and our god Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. We hope you hold to the cross. Joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing, Lord, let us praise his resurrection for enduring the cross for us. He has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, according to multiple mercies. Welcome to the do not cast me away from presence, do not take your Holy Spirit from me, restore to me the joy of your the Lord you shall open my lips and ask you May the Lord our God remember your priesthood in his kingdom always and ever the ages of ages. Amen. May the Lord our God remember those who love us and those who hate us. In peace, lift up your hands to the holy places and bless the Lord always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. The Lord ascends with the cry of command and with the shout of the trumpet of God.
Eesti kirjas, Ootheos. Endi vasilia aftu pandote, niin keai, ke istuse onnastone on. May the Lord, our God, remember all of us in his kingdom, always, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. May the Lord our God remember your peace through his kingdom always now and ever into the ages of ages. May the Lord our God remember your peace. Peace here of sin is to me, stick Kyrios and the Basilia of Tupando tenin ki ai, ke istu se onnas tonne onnon amin. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and good in the world, let us ask the Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peace in suffering and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise and those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you. That your good and gracious spirit may abide with us, with the gifts here presented, and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good and life-creating spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Peace be with all. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Christ is in our midst. I love you, Lord, my strength, Lord, is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. Was it in the the Christ is in our
τα στήρα στα στήρα σε σοφία πρόσχομεν. Ιστεύω εις εν αθεόν πατέρα παντοκράτορα πίτη την ερών Κύριος ορατών και πάντων και αωράτων και εις ένα Κύριον Ιησούν Χριστόν τον Υιόν του Θεού τον μονογενή τον εκ του Πατρός και νηθέντα προπάντων των αιώνων πως εκ ποτός θεών αληθινών εκ Θεού αληθινού γεννηθέντα ουπί θέντα ομοούσιον του Πατρίδιου τα πάντα εγέρετο τον δίμα στους ανθρώπους και δια τη μετέραν σωτηρίαν, κατελθόντα εκ των ουρανών και σαρκωθέντα εκ πνεύματος Αγίου και Μαρία της Παρθένου και να αυτοποίησαντα. Στα πρωτέντα τα υπερημών επικονδίου Πιλάτου και παρθόντα και τα φέντα και αναστάντα τη τρίτη ημέρα κατά τα σκραφάς και ανελθόντα εις τους ουρανούς και καταζόμενον εκ δεξιών του Πατρός και πάλι ενερχόμενον με τα δόξης πριν ζώντας και νεκρούς ου της Βασιλείας ου έστε τέλος και εις το Πνεύμα το Άγιον το Κύριον το Ζώπιον το εκ του Πατρός εκπορευόμενον στο Συμπατρί και Υιό συμπροσκυνούμενον και συνδοξαζόμενον κολαλήσαν διά των προφητών εις μίαν Αγίαν Καθολικήν και Αποστολικήν Εκκλησίαν, ομολογώ εν βάπτισμα εις άφεσιν αμαρτιών, προσδοκώ ανάσταση νεκρών και ζωή του μέλλοντος αιώνος. Αμήν. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, Light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets, and one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead in the light of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in all, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right to sing to you, bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion, for you are God ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things, we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all things we know and do not know for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy, which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you're surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim, seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings. Singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out and saying.
Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us. On the night he was delivered up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior, all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Da sacton son si prospero men catapanda, kediapanda. Please bow your heads through the end of the hymn. Once again, we offer you the spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the gifts here presented. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. O Theos, last to me, to Mato, lo, kele, so me. God be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Since they be for those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual worship for those who repose in the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. For Saint John the Prophet, Baptist, for the Holy Virgin, and the Apostles, for Saints. his mother and Damascinos, the new martyr of Mamathus, his memories, we celebrate this day and also for his cousin. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and call your people. And call your people. And, and praise your most honored the majestic name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you.
Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. That our loving God, who has received them at His holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may in return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope we ask, pray, and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries. From this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence, without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Patrimon, o endi suranis, a yestito tonomasu, el tatu i vasiliasu, yenitito to telimasu, o senuranoke epitis yis, ton artonimon ton epiusion, dosim in simeron, ya apesim in tauflimata imon, o schemis safim in spilatesimon, chemis in eggs mas spirasmon, alaris in mas apotoponiru. Ότι σου έστεινε η βασιλεία και η δύναμη και η δόξα του Πατρό και του Ιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματο νυν και αγί και ει του αιώνα των αιώνων. Ειρήνη πάση. Τα σκεφαλά σημών το κυρίω κλείνω με. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you've created all things, and by your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick, physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, who God hears from your holy dwelling place, the glorious throne of your kingdom, you are enthroned on high with the Father, and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us. Let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand for us. Let us be attentive, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. The Lamb of God is broken, so broken but not divided. He is forever eaten and never consumed. But He sanctified those who partake of Him. Fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the fervor of your saints, always known ever into the ages of ages. Amen. The warmth of faith, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners. I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me. Transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation. Partake of your mystical supper. 
sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? I dare to enter into the bridal chamber. Clothing will keep me since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by your angels. In your love, O Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation, but for the minorityness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body, and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in Him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as to Judas, but as a thief I will confess to you. Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our immortal King and God. My brothers in Christ, forgive me. My brothers and sisters in Christ, forgive me, a sinner. Behold, I approach Christ. Amen. Amen. John, your Lord, your priest. Let's be the most precious holy body of our Lord and God, the Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus, Please forgive me, the unworthy priest and sinner. And the Lord of God, remember your priesthood in this kingdom, always known as. Χαιροσύνη στο μυστή κυρίω στην βασίλη αυτού πάντων δεν είναι και η πιστοσύνη μα. Glory to you, O God, glory to you, O God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let's take Let us venerate the holy resurrection of Christ, who behold with the cross. Joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing, Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Potizo, potizo, inea, ieros, limi, gardoxa, kirio, episana, te la cora veninke, a galosio, an sida, irvinke, apo teotoki, en ti a gersi, te tokos.
At this time, I reminder that all who are Orthodox Christians who have properly prepared to receive the holy mysteries of the body and blood of Christ may come forward when you are called forth row by row. And a reminder that the leftmost chalice, we ask that first we allow the church school staff to come there first, and church school staff only, that they may proceed to their classrooms and arrive before their students. And after that, all students, all parishioners, all families will be dismissed one row at a time, and there will be three chalices to which you may go. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
O God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Wash away and live by your holy blood the sins of those commemorated the processions of the holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly life, giving an awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of light. To you we give glory, thanksgiving and worship. To the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Christ our God, you are the potent alone of the dispensation of the Father, you are heart, you are the plan, is not ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Please join us as we offer memorial prayers today, one year for Sally Vespina Hionidis and one year for Antula Pefanis. <laughs> Ευρωκαγώ την οδονδία της μετανοίας Το Απολλωνός πρόβα τον εγώ ημί Ανακάλεσέ με σωτήρ και σώσον με Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes of old You created me from nothing and honored me with your divine image when I disobeyed your commandment, O Lord, you cast me down to the earth from where I was taken. Lead me back again to your likeness and renew my original beauty. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. I am an image of your ineffable glory, though I bear the scars of my transgressions. On your creation, Master, take pity and cleanse me by your compassion. Grant me the homeland for which I long, and once again make me a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. 
Give rest, O God, to your servants and place them in paradise where the choirs of the saints and the righteous will shine as the stars of heaven. To your departed servants give rest, O Lord, and forgive all their offenses. And unto the ages of ages, amen. Rejoice, gracious lady, who for the salvation of all gave birth to God in the flesh, and through whom your human race has found salvation, through you, pure and blessed Theotokos, may we find paradise. Alleluia, 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 thou excessio Theos. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia. Among the saints, give rest, O Christ, to the souls of your servants, where there is no pain, sorrow, or sighing, but only life everlasting. Within your peace, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also. The souls of your servants for you alone are immortal. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You are our God who descended into Hades and loosened the pains of those who were chained. Grant rest also, O Savior, to the souls of your servants. Now and forever into the ages of ages, amen. Most pure and spotless virgin who ineffably gave birth to God, intercede with him for the salvation of the soul of your servant. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your great love, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the departed servants of God, Despina and Anthula, who have fallen asleep, and for the forgiveness of all their sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord God place their souls where the righteous repose. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of their sins. From Christ, our immortal King and God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
O God of spirits and of all flesh, who have trampled upon death and crushed the power of the devil, giving life to your world, you yourself, O Lord, give rest to the souls of your servants, Vespina and Anthula, who have fallen asleep, in a place of light, a place of repose, a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, or suffering. As a good and loving God, forgive every sin they have committed in thought, word, or deed, for there is no one who lives and is sinless. You alone are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. Otisi i anastisi i zoi ke anapusis ton ke ke menon dulunsu antulas ke despinas Christe o Theos Simon ke sitin dok sana na pembomen sin do anaku su patri ke to panagio ke agathok ke zopio su pnevmatinin ke ai ke istu se onas to ne ono. Amen. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servants, despina and antula, Christ our God, and to you we give glory. With your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Eonia sa simnimi aksi makaristi ke aimista da fiimon. May your memory be eternal, dear sisters, you who are worthy of eternal blessedness and eternal memory. Eonia sa simnimi aksi makaristi ke aimista da fiimon. Eonia imni. And who is my neighbor? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel reading, we are confronted with a significant question. Who is my neighbor? Obviously, we do not mean geographically. Who lives up the street from me? Who lives down the street from me? The house in front. But we mean... Who is the neighbor whom we have to love? And let's not take a Christian answer for granted, everybody. And let's see how we arrived at this by reading the parable of the Good Samaritan that we had today. We're going to start very slowly reading the text in first gear, as it were. Then we're going to go in sixth gear through the whole parable. And then back into first gear, stop one more time at the end. And the parable begins in your, and we're going to work closely with the text. At that time, a lawyer stood up. A lawyer at that time was not exactly the lawyer that we have today. A lawyer were, was more of a theologian. However, when they were doing theology, they were actually reading the law of Moses. So it has a very significant aspect that is legal. What is right to do, what is wrong to do. But they were closer to theologians, especially moral theologians, than they are to lawyers as we refer to them today. So there's a lawyer who stands up to put Jesus to the test. And he says, teacher. So he calls him rabbi. Rabbi was not the title of the head of a synagogue. Obviously, Jesus travels from place to place. But when he says, teachers, teacher, He's basically saying, I trust your authority. You know how to read the scriptures. Let's see your interpretation of it. 
And then he asks a significant question. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? I have been ordained for almost 20 years. Never once in my priesthood did one person come to me to ask me, what must I do to be saved? I exchange hundreds of emails a day, all of them asking, what is the next meeting? When does it start? How soon can we get out of here? What are we going to talk about so that we get it out of the way? So it's always out of the way, out of the way. Let's get out of here. To where? And this lawyer, before you start judging him, is asking a question that we do not ask. And it is an essential question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? I'll figure out what I must do to make money. I'll figure out what I must do to stay in my job. I'll figure out what to do to be a good father, to be a good spouse, but to inherit eternal life. And then Jesus' answer is even more surprising than the question itself. At the same time, though, when he says it, we go, yeah, of course. So Jesus is asking him, what is written in the law how do you read? In other words, let's take the Bible. Let's take the Bible. This is not about, I don't know what father of the church. This is not about what significant spiritual father from a place close by. This is not what your parish priest is saying and his opinion. This is not newspapers. This is not novels. This is the one thing that is supposed to shape our reality, the Bible. What does the Bible say? So Jesus already, and we have been one and a half lines, right, into the reading thus far. And we have seen two very surprising things. One, the question that we have to ask, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Two, where to find it? The Bible. And in that case, obviously, it did include the New Testament. So it was in the law of Moses, in the scriptures of what we call the Old Testament. Now, this lawyer was a very well-educated person. He doesn't miss, uh, miss a beat. He says immediately, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Would you like a neighbor like that? I would love a neighbor like that. I would love to be that neighbor. So that when people say, who lives there in that house? People maybe would say, it's somebody who loves his Lord, his God, with all his heart. With all his soul. With all his strength, everything he can do, he does it for the Lord. With all his mind. His mind is not scattered left and right and distracted by each and every silly little thing. The Lord is the focus of his life. And you know how we know he loves the Lord? Because he loves us, his neighbors. You cannot love the Lord and not love your neighbor. By now we know that, right? If you say you love your Lord, your neighbors have to know it. They have to feel love. We barely started this gospel, and all of a sudden, we have to stop. We're not even getting into the question, who is the neighbor? We're getting into the question, do I love myself? It's not a rhetorical one. And in almost 20 years of priesthood, it is such an awesome, in the real sense of the word awesome, to see when people come to confession, 
open up their souls and you help them love themselves more. Because some people look inside their souls like in a mirror and they are saying, I don't like what I see. When I go to confession, I do the same thing. I don't like what I see. And so, when we look at ourselves in the mirror and do not like what we see, do we still love ourselves? Do you love yourself? Ask yourself this question. It's an extremely important one. And I'll bet you the answer is yes. There are times when I don't like myself, but I love myself. I don't like what I'm doing, but I wish the best to me. Right? I don't wish my destruction. I hope to get better. Can I look at my neighbor? Can I look at everybody around me and say, that person is doing the wrong thing. It's not just like I don't like them because we listen to different kinds of music. It's I don't like them because they're really doing the wrong thing. And at the end of the day to say, I love them. How do you do that? How do you do that when I don't like myself? So for Jesus to say, or for the lawyer in this parable to say, love your God how much as you love yourself, at first sight, that's not a big deal. Because <laughs> maybe we don't love ourselves very much. But we do. We don't like ourselves. So let's consider that. Let's not confuse liking ourselves and loving ourselves. So maybe we don't like ourselves, but we love ourselves. Now, loving yourself too much, that's a sin. And the great saint of our church, Maximus, the confessor, He's looking at the sin. Those of you who speak Greek, you've heard of philaftia. Philaftia means to love oneself. And when you love yourself too much in the sinful way, everybody person is, val is valuable. <clears throat> Every person is valuable to the extent to which they do something good for me. Does this person feed me? Good, I like them. Does this person give me money? Good, I like them. Does this person admire me? Good, I like them. That's philaftia. And this is wrong. To love ourselves in that regard, we are making ourselves the criterion for a person's worth. A person is worth as much as they serve me. But we need to love them as God loves them. God is the criterion, not us human beings. And so, St. Maximus the Confessor continues by saying that naturally, our love is inclined towards all human beings, right? Naturally, we like to love everybody. And it is because of sin that sometimes we do not like everybody. And it is a sign of our imperfect love when we let things such as their attitude, their appearance, their convictions, their actions to diminish our love for us. And how does he know? Because Christ died for everybody. Did everybody like Christ? No. He wouldn't have ended up on the cross. Christ liked everybody. And yet, not everybody liked him. Some people hated him. Some people were his enemies. Can we have that type of love? Maximus the Confessor is asking. Since naturally we're inclined to love everybody. Are we going to let people's imperfections in our way as opposed to looking at these people in their relationship to God? So he says, and I quote, You have not yet acquired perfect love if, you regard, if your regard for people is still swayed by their characters. For example, if for some particular reason you love one person and hate another. Or if for some reason you sometimes love and sometimes hate that person. So he is saying that when we hate people, 
is because we don't know how to love. And we have to learn how to love. A little bit later on, he says, that a righteous person loves all people equally, loves them as friends, and the bad enemies as enemies, helping them, exercising forbearance, patiently accepting whatever they do, not taking the evil into account at all, but even suffering on their behalf if the opportunity offers, so that if possible, they to become friends. And it is a very surprising text again, because St. Maximus is saying, some people you're going to love as friends, but some people you're going to love as enemies. You mean we have enemies as Christians? And St. Maximus seems to say, yes. Even as a Christian, you're not going to be able to escape that. You're going to have enemies. They're going to hate you. You will love them. But they are going to hate you. There are enemies. And you have to love them. So now let's return to the parable. It's a very interesting story. Because it speaks of a man who comes down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And we've talked about the symbolism many times. This person, because he's coming from Jerusalem, he's probably a Jew. And as he's traveling, he falls among robbers. He's left half dead. Who comes the first time by him? Hmm? A priest. A priest comes by. And what does the priest do for him? Nothing. And that's his co-national. That's his co-religious, right? Is the person who has the same nationality and the same religion. You would think that's his neighbor. The second time, another person uh, comes by. Who? A Levite. He's a servant of the temple. What does he do for this man fell among robbers? Nothing. Just passes by. He's co-national. He's co-religious. His neighbor does nothing. And then a Samaritan comes. By the way, when you say Samaritans, if you're a Jew, you cringe. Because these are people whom the Jews hated, hated most, even more than the Romans. I've met only one Samaritan in my whole life. I don't know why these are nice people. But at that time, there was a huge hatred. And so you can imagine Jesus' audience hearing that the Samaritan is coming. And then this Samaritan shows love to the Jew. Do you think the Samaritan loved the Jew? No. They hated each other. The feelings were mutual. And yet this Samaritan is looking at his enemy with love. Remember what St. Maximus says? That some people will love as friends, our co-national, our co-religious, the priest and the Levite, and some people we love as enemies, Jews towards Samaritans, Samaritans towards Jews. And so the example that Jesus gives for love of the enemy is not a Jewish person. He himself being a Jew. But it's a Samaritan who loves his enemy. And he doesn't stop there. He says at the end, we were in sixth gear, now back in first gear. He says at the end, did you notice? Who do you think proved neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? So I'm not just going to tell you, love your enemies. Let me tell you straight who your neighbor is. And then that lawyer responds, the one who showed mercy on him. So basically he says that the Samaritan looked at his enemy as a neighbor. That the Samaritan loved God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his might, with all his strength, with all his mind, and his enemy as himself, and that makes the enemy the neighbor. So what does Jesus say? Go and do likewise. Love your enemies like you love yourself. Love your neighbors like you love yourself. Love your friends like you love yourself. Love yourself. But do like this man who loved also his enemies. Go and do likewise.
Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord in his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love, <clears throat> always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, Christ our God, and I hope glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God. Through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable, bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy, glorious prophet and foreigner, John the Baptist, the holy, glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy, victorious martyrs, the holy, righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, St. John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, his mother, Anthusa, and St. Damaskinos, the new martyr of Mount Athos, whose memories we celebrate this day, and of all the saints, the Fgondonai Ion Patero Nimon Kyrie Jesu Christe O Theos Eleison Kesos Onimas. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect all of us.